economics. Correlation versus causality is everything. It's a whole game. That the correlation is worth nothing. That um, you know, knowing that two things. So what is correlation? Correlation means two things happen together. Okay, causality means one thing happens and that causes a second. From a public policy perspective, causality is all we care about. And an example we give in the book is about uh, uh, when the Chicago Bulls are going for the, the, the championship. And um, what the mayor of Chicago has seen over time is that whenever the Bulls win the NBA Finals, the, the, you know, people in Chicago are ecstatic. Okay? So he puts out a decree that morning, okay? the morning of the seventh game of the NBA Finals, which says all Chicagoans must be ecstatically <laughs> happy today. Okay? And he thinks, look, Every time in the past when the Chicagoans have been ecstatically happy, we've won the championship. Okay, so if I can just make sure we're all really happy, we're guaranteed to win the championship. Okay, that's a, that's a silly case in which you realize that correlation and causality are totally different, right? If you get the direction of causality wrong, it's hopeless, it's meaningless. And I think people don't really get that. People don't understand that you really need to isolate the causal effect. And that my entire academic life has been devoted to figuring out tricky ways to get at causality because the world doesn't just offer you up causality. Okay, what you see in the world is correlation. What the world gives you is things are moving together or they aren't. You could say when I walk out today and it's raining really hard and everybody's got an umbrella, man, if those people would only not walk around with their umbrellas, it would stop raining because every time I see it raining, people have umbrellas and they must be causing the rain. But they're not. <laughs> No, that didn't I got a right, different one. You know, what I, you know, if someone hates Christmas, let's say there was a Grinch who wanted to get rid of Christmas, um, one thing he might try to do would be to ban Christmas cards, right? Because every year, one way to know Christmas is right around the corner is that Christmas cards start showing up in your mailbox. So you might think, if I could just figure out a way to keep Christmas cards from showing up in my mailbox, I could get rid of Christmas altogether. And that's a, a classic example of how you can get correlation causality completely backwards if you if you uh, if you're not thinking straight. One of my favorite examples of correlation versus causality has to do with crime. Okay, so if you just look at a city like Washington D.C. and say compare it to Denver, you see there's lots more crime in Washington D.C. than Denver. Well, what what causes that difference in crime? Well, if you look at the number of police in Washington D.C., there are also many more police per capita than there are in Denver. And so a logical conclusion you come to is, well, maybe police cause crime. Right? Wherever you go, wherever there's, wherever you go to a place that has a lot of crime, you're guaranteed to find lots of police. Okay? And is it possible that police cause crime? Well, no, of course not. That's not the answer. The fact is that crime causes police. When there's a lot of crime in a place, the political response is to hire lots of police. When there's no crime, why would you bother paying the cost of, of having police around? And indeed, for something like 25 years, the criminologists seem to think that police didn't have any effect on crime because they looked at correlations instead of causality. It's only been in the last 20 years that people have come to understand that uh, the fact that we have lots of police where there's lots of crime is because a crime causes the police and not vice versa.